Hi, everyone, and thank you for tuning in to Kingdom Kids this week. My name is Mr. Matt, and we have an amazing day planned for you today. Today, we're going to begin a new series called Broken. How many of you have ever broken something before? Maybe you had a toy and you were playing with it and you accidentally broke it. You maybe just snapped it right in two. Sometimes mom or dad can fix it, but other times it's broken for good. Or maybe you were at the dinner table and you were eating and you accidentally knocked over your glass or your plate and it shattered on the ground. It's not like you can use tape to fix that glass or plate back together. If it's shattered into a million pieces, it's pretty much broken forever. Last year, I used to have a work phone. It was an iPhone and I would use it for work. And sometimes if I wasn't working, my three-year-old son would play with it. He had some games or apps that he would play with it on. And one day he was playing one of those games when I was on vacation in a hotel and we were all together. And he got very frustrated out and pulled it out. And for some reason, he just took it and he threw it right in the toilet. He threw it in the toilet. I scooped it out as soon as possible and grabbed it with my hands all yucky with toilet water, but it was too late. Before I knew it, the phone wouldn't turn on. It was dead. It was broken forever. It was completely gone. It can be very bad and very frustrating when our things are broken. But for the next few weeks, we're going to learn that people can be broken too. How can people be broken? Well, it's different from my toilet iPhone. If you throw a person into a toilet, they're probably just going to get mad and a little bit wet. No, people's lives are broken because of something called sin. But we're going to learn some very good news today, that through Yeshua, God can put the most broken, messed up people, their lives back together again. And that brings us to today's big idea. Today's big idea says, God can put my broken life back together again. No matter how much I put a broken glass together or try to turn on my toilet iPhone, I would never be able to fix it. And when our lives are broken by sin, we would never be able to fix it either. But God loves to fix broken lives. And we get to learn just how he does it later in our lesson. But first, can you help say the big idea with me one more time? One, two, three. God can put my broken life back together again. Cool, cool, cool. Well, thank you, kids. Uh, oh, goodness. Here we go again. Well, my good friend is here today uh, who has a very special stomach and a very special appetite, very special taste. You never know what he's pulled out of the trash today, but I'm sure we're going to find out. Uh, very often, he mixes up the message of our power verse, but at least he always teaches us a very important lesson from the Word of God. Boys and girls, can you help introduce with me my very special friend, Mr. Gobbledygook? Gobbledygook, gobbledygook, lives inside the trash. Gobbledygook, gobbledygook, help him if you can. He's mixing up the Bible story, mixing up the verse. Gobbledygook, gobbledygook, teach this guy the word. What on earth happened to you, gobbledygook? You have tape everywhere. You, you made a mess. Here, let me help you. Thank you, I guess. I was trying to follow the power verse today, but I don't think I got it right. <laughs> well, what do you mean? Well, you see this tape? I found it the other day in the trash, and I had an old hole in my trash can, and I used it to cover it up, and it worked. So I, I thought I could fix some other broken things, too. I found an old book. I taped it back together. I found an old cell phone. I taped it back together. And then I thought, I think we are broken because of sin. Maybe this old tape could fix my brokenness too. So I taped up all the ways that I could possibly sin. I taped up my eyes. I taped up my ears so I wouldn't hear anything bad. I taped up my mouth. Oh, yeah, people sin with their mouth all the time. So I covered that right up. I covered even my brain so I wouldn't use that to sin either. Now, where did you get an idea like that? Well, the power verse. The power verse says that if we cover our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us. So that's what I did. I covered up everything gobbledygook. 
God doesn't want us to try to cover up our sins. He wants us to tell him our sins. The power verse says, But if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us. 1 John 1, 9. God doesn't want us to try to hide our sins from him, but he wants us to tell him so he can clean us and fix our brokenness. Really? Oh man, I must have mixed that up. But if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us. 1 John 1, 9. Well, this tape is really going to hurt when I take it off. But guess what? I found out that you can also use tape as chewing gum. That's kind of gross. But at least we learned a very powerful power verse today. Well, kids, it is time to get into our praise and worship. So why don't you stand up and get ready to sing praise to our God.
Father, we thank you that we can go right into your presence by the blood of Yeshua. We thank you that just like Yeshua invited the little children to come to him, Lord, you invite each and every one of us to go to you, Lord, without having to make ourselves anything special or be anything that we're not, Lord. We can come to you who we truly are, and you accept us and you love us. We thank you for that time in your presence, Lord. We thank you that we just get to spend time with our Father. We get to spend time with the God of the universe. Lord, bless us as we bless your name throughout this service. Continue to teach these boys and girls and even the parents and adults uh, your word and unfold your mysteries to them in the name of Yeshua. We thank you and we bless you in Yeshua's name. Amen. I'm Ashley.
question. I'm a regular kid just like you. I go to church, I play with my friends, I watch TV. I love junk food. But there's something I really love to do. Read. Hey, here's the library. Let's go check it out. There are all kinds of books out there with all kinds of information. You can learn a lot with books. You can learn about outer space. You can learn about all kinds of animals. You can even learn about countries and buildings all over the world. But do you know what one of my favorite books of all time is? Mother Goose's Nursery Rhyme. This book makes me laugh. Hey Diddle Diddle, The Old Woman Who Lived in a Shoe, Old Mother Hubbard, those are hilarious. But there's one story in particular that makes me sad every time I read it. Humpty Dumpty, check it out. Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty Dumpty back together again. Isn't that sad? Humpty Dumpty was broken and no one could put him back together. What was he going to do? Just sit there broken into pieces? It's such a sad story. Kind of reminds me of living a life without Jesus. When people live their lives without Jesus as their Savior, their lives are broken. Sin has torn their lives apart and their lives are totally broken. When your life is broken, you can try to fix it by yourself, but it won't work. Some people try to fix their broken lives with things like friends, relationships, money, and even drugs and alcohol. But none of these things can fix their broken lives. Here's the good news. God can put our broken lives back together again. When we call on God, He answers. And He takes our broken lives and puts them back together again. All the king's horses and all the king's men can't, but God can. And that brings us to today's big idea. Today's big idea says, God can put my broken life back together again. So every time today you hear this sound, Hey, what's the big idea? Stand up on your feet and say, God can put my broken life back together again. And that's today's big idea. Well, we've got a lot to learn today about how God puts broken lives back together again. Until next time, this is Ashton reminding you, all the king's horses and all the king's men can't, but God can. As I said last week, we have a new guest with us this week who we are going to help teach the big idea. He was born in the Negev Desert, and he started performing at gas stations near Jericho, and now he joins me for his first chance of internet fame in our segment called, What's the Big Idea? Kids, please help welcome with me, Mr. Jimmy Camel. Hey, what's the big idea? Thank you for being with me here today, and thank you for all my fans out there. You're the real stars. Now let's talk about your upcoming movie. Movie? Jimmy, I invited you on the show so that the kids at home can teach you the big idea. Our big idea is the main point of what we're going to be learning today in our lesson. Wow, that's great. That's swell. Why don't you tell us a little bit about it? Um, okay, but I'm not sure that you know what's going on. Well, our big idea today is God can put my broken life back together again. Do you think that you could say that back to us? Sure, absolutely, yeah. Uh, you can put my broken knife back in the kitchen. I'll just get a new one later. Oh, oh, no. First of all, broken knives and any knives are dangerous. So if you see one, you should tell an adult. Secondly, that was, that was not the big idea. We're, we're, we're going to have the boys stand up and say this one more time for Mr. Jimmy Camel. Can you say this with me, boys? Ready? One, two, three. God can put my broken life back together again. Very good. You can have a seat. Jimmy, do you think that you've memorized that big idea now? Wow, what a great audience. Okay, the big idea says... God will put your broken life in the garbage bin. 
No, sir, that was not what the boy said. God doesn't throw broken people away and broken lives away. If we come to him with our brokenness, God puts broken people back together again. So, girls, I think I'm going to need you to stand up and help say this big idea. Ready? On three. One, two, three. God can put my broken life back together again. We're going to go to a commercial break. And when we get back, we have a special No, 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 no. We are not going to a commercial break. This is not even your show. Just repeat back the big idea. Whatever you say, I can put my broken life back together again all by myself. Actually, a lot of people try to put their lives back together on their own without God. But that's just like Humpty Dumpty trying to pick up the pieces of his shell and glue them back together. Only God can pick up the pieces of our lives and put them back together again. Well, boys and girls, I think we need everyone to stand up and say this big idea one more time for Mr. Jimmy Camel. Are you ready? One, two, three. God can put my broken life back together again. Well, do you think you got it now, Jimmy? I think I got it. God can put my broken life back together again. Congratulations. Now, normally when we get the big idea right, we all have a high five party. But seeing that you don't have any hands, uh, we're going to try something different. Why don't we do, why don't we do something like this? How about we call it the crazy camel dance? You want to do a crazy camel dance? I'll teach you how it goes. We just do this. Can you do that? Can we do that at home, kids? Well, thanks for having me on your show, Jimmy Camel. I hope to be back next week. Well, kids, why don't we stand up for one last praise and worship song?
Our Bible story today is from Luke chapter 19, and it's a story about a man whose life was very broken. You see, he had everything he could have wanted in the natural. He had money, he had power, but his life was still very broken inside. This is his story. Yeshua was walking through Jericho. There was a man there. His name was Zacchaeus. He was the head tax man, which meant he collected money for the Roman government. But he would often take more than he was supposed to from his Jewish family and kept it for himself. He was quite rich from stealing from others. Zacchaeus desperately wanted to see Yeshua as he walked by, but a crowd was in the way. He was a short man and couldn't see over the crowd. So he ran on ahead of Yeshua in the crowd and climbed up in a sycamore tree so that he could see Yeshua when he came by. When Yeshua got to the tree, he looked up and said, Zacchaeus, hurry down. Today is the day that I'm going to be a guest in your home. Zacchaeus scrambled out of the tree, surprised, but he was happy to take Yeshua home with him. Everyone who saw what happened was angry and said, Why is Yeshua becoming friends with this crook, this thief, this sinner? Zacchaeus just looked at Yeshua and said, Master, I'll give away half of my money to the poor, and I'll pay back four times everything that I've stolen. Yeshua said to him, Today salvation has come to this house. He is a son of Abraham, and I have come to find and save what is lost. Zacchaeus was a thief. He was a sinner. He was broken. But Yeshua saved him and put together his broken life. Girls. My name is Dr. Dr. Boy. Ah! Yes, that's exactly right. I'm a super scientist extraordinaire. And uh, uh, I'm Dr. Van Smut. No need to read that. You will never be as smart as me. And besides, we have better things to do. Well, you're precisely right about part of that, Dr. Von Smutty Pants. We are here today to teach today's Power Bus. And today's Power Bus says... But if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us. First John 1 John 1.9. Wonderful power of us, everybody. Yes, that's exactly right. Now, Dr. Vaughn, what did you think of that? I thought it was fantastic, but you know that I am smarter than you, so let me do it. And I want the boys to stand and do it with me on the count of three. Yes. One, a two, a three. But if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us. First John 1 9. That was fantastic. That, in fact, was probably the best that will ever be done. Nonsense, Genoise. I believe that the girls can do so much better than you. <laughs> That's exactly right. So, girls, stand up on your tippy toes and get ready to do the power of us with me, the, the boy. <laughs> on the count of three. Here we go. One, a two, a three! But if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us! First John 1 9. Yes, 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 yes! Good job, girls! Good job! You may have a seat! Here's an unwanted for kids that when we are broken by sin, we can ask God to forgive us and he will put our lives back together again! Isn't that wonderful? Yahoo! Now, Dr. Von Snotty Snee, let's work together, have the boys and the girls stand up together and do the power of us with us together on the count of three. Here we go. One, two, three. But, but if, if we, we confess, confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us. First John 1, 9. Well, that was fantastic. Have a seat, have a seat. I must confess, yes. you did a better job than I had suspected. Oh, yes. But next time, I will do it much, much better. No. Okay, for now, hi, I'm Dr. Van Hickelsnatt. And I'm Dr. Boy. Doodles. Bye-bye, Bye-bye. Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty Dumpty together again. I bet you never thought we would have a Bible lesson about a nursery rhyme, huh? 
Well, the story of Humpty Dumpty reminds me of many people's lives. You see, there's so many people that find themselves at a point where they're, they're just broken. They feel broken inside. They feel just like Humpty Dumpty. They tried everything, but they can't figure out how to put their broken lives back together again. It's a very sad situation. In our story, Zacchaeus didn't climb up into a wall, but he climbed up into a tree. He knew that he was so broken that he needed something more than money could provide. He knew he needed Yeshua. But how do people's lives become so broken to begin with? Well, the truth is, all of our lives are broken at some point. How do I know this? Because the Bible says we are all broken. Romans 3.23 says, for all have sinned. That means you've sinned. That means I've sinned. That means your mom and dad have sinned. Your grandma and grandpa, your brother and sister, of course, have sinned. Your pastor has sinned. Everyone in the entire world has sinned. And sin is the very thing that causes our lives to be broken. Let me demonstrate. This is going to represent a person. Now, this person is going along in life just as happy as can be, but then they are tempted to sin and they give in. Can somebody name a sin that we might be tempted to commit? Maybe lying. Or maybe it's just a little lie. But even though it's just one sin, guess what happens? It only takes one sin and our lives are broken. It doesn't matter what sin it is either. What about stealing? Or being disrespectful to our parents. It only takes one sin and our lives are broken. We feel just like Humpty Dumpty. When our lives are broken by sin, we feel useless, we feel helpless, and we feel in need of a major repair. But that's where Yeshua comes in. You see, God is the creator of our lives. And if he created us, he knows just how to put us back together again. Broken lives need Yeshua. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through the Messiah, Yeshua, our Lord. That means even though sin causes our lives to be broken, there is a way for God to put our lives back together again. And that way is Yeshua. Sadly, there's many kids out there that try to put their lives back together on their own. They think that popularity will put their lives back together. So they try everything that they can to be the most popular person that they can, only to feel as broken as before. Other kids think that money or fame or even other things will make them forget how broken their lives really are on the inside. It's like Zacchaeus from our story. No matter what he tried to do to fix his problem, no matter how much money he had, no matter how much popularity or fame he had, he still felt broken inside. No matter what you try to do to fix your broken life on your own, you will always feel like Humpty Dumpty. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put him back together again. You can't put your broken life back together on your own. According to Romans 6.23, when our lives are broken by sin, the only way to do it is by receiving the free gift of eternal life through Yeshua. Maybe you're here today and think, well, that's great. I really need that eternal gift of life. I want that free gift, and I believe that God can do it. But just how does he do that? Do I need a magic formula? Do I need to say abracadabra? No, I'll tell you exactly how God puts our lives back together again. Yeshua can put our broken lives back together again. Our power verse today teaches us exactly how he does that. It says, but if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us. It goes on to say that not only will Yeshua forgive us, but he'll cleanse us. He'll take away every wrong. He'll put our lives back together again and make it as if we had never been broken in the first place. All we have to do is admit to him our sins Talk to him about what we've done wrong, our mistakes, and ask him to forgive us. That is amazing. Let's bow our heads, close our eyes, and pray. Father, I thank you for your free gift of grace, your free gift of eternal life through Yeshua. I thank you that Yeshua paid 
everything, paid for all of our sins, and not just all of our sins, but all the sins in the entire world, he died as a sacrifice for all of them. And all we have to do is come to you. Lord, if anyone's feeling shame, fear, have the feeling that they need to cover up their mistakes, cover up their sin, Lord, we just take that away right now in the name of Yeshua. Lord, your word says that if we come to you, confess, or are honest with you, that you are faithful. That means 100% of the time, all the time, you're going to forgive us when we come to you in faith. Boys and girls, with your eyes closed and your head bowed, I just want you to think about your life. Maybe there's something that you've done wrong and you've tried to cover it up. There's something that uh, you, you continue to do wrong time after time again. See, God's not mad at you. He, he's not angry with you. All he wants you to do is tell him about it. All he wants you to do is be honest about it. You don't have to sit there and cry. You don't have to sit there and, and bang your head. No, all you have to do is tell God the truth. So I want you to do that right now, just to yourself. If there's something that you've done wrong, I want you to tell him about it. Say, God, I'm sorry. God, I'm sorry I sinned. God, I'm sorry I lied. God, I'm sorry I stole. God, I'm sorry I talked back to mom or dad. And if you ask him to forgive you, he will. Father, I pray that you would forgive every sin right now. Everyone that's asking for forgiveness right now, we know that you hear us. We know that you are faithful to do it. There's no time where you're not forgiving our sin when we come to you. Bless these boys and girls. Any guilty conscience, we pray that you just roll it all away, that we have right standing between us and God right now through Yeshua. We receive that free gift from you in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. You know, God is 100%. That means he's all the time he's going to forgive your sins when you ask him to. That's what the Bible says. When we tell him about our sins, he's always going to forgive us. And he's always going to wash us from unrighteousness. And we can be 100% free from the power of sin. Isn't that awesome? Well, boys and girls, I want you to continue to remember your big idea and power verse throughout this week. Parents, as always, we do have a coloring page with uh, a little snippet from our story today, as well as the big idea and power verse on there so that they can continue to remember that. The Bible says just to continue to say God's word in our hearts so that we don't sin against him. Uh, faith comes by hearing and continuing to hear the Word of God. So build that up in your child's heart by continuing to teach them that power verse, teach them the Word of God that we've learned this week. Well, we love you all. God bless you. Lachitraot. Shabbat Shalom.